Hey, welcome back. So, so far, as you know, we've been working on Streamlit and because it's so much fun, I actually decided to do one more video on it and introduce Plotly graphs for you. So if you followed my previous playlist of creating a Streamlit app for yourself, you are familiar with this. And if not, go check it out. I'll leave a link somewhere here or in the description. And uh, after we've done this, we basically used all the default things, but I wanted to show you the Plotly graphs, which tend to be a little bit more customizable, a little bit more interactable. And um, here are some examples of what we're going to do. So uh, without further ado, let me show you how we can make this happen in our app. Okay, so let's start from where we left off last time and see how we can build all the Plotly graphs. So this is what we had so far uh, when we left when we deployed our app. Now we want to add a new thing. So of course, the first thing that I want to do is create a new container for it. Uh, I'll just call this the interactive container. All right, once I've done this, I am going to go at the end of this file and create the section. Um, yeah, so, so far this is good enough. Uh, what I'll need to do is also import the Plotly uh, library. So there are two libraries in the Plotly library that we can import. We can or we can use one of them is Plotly Express and the other one is Geo or Graph Objects. The difference between those is, as far as I've seen, is Express is already built in functions. So you can say just say a px dot line and it will create a line graph for you. Whereas for Graph Objects, it's a little bit of a low level library where you would have to you use the same function to create a graph, but then you have to specify which kind of function or which kind of um, graph that you want inside this function. So it's a tiny bit more complicated as far as I understand, but I'll show you how to use both of them. And uh, just a disclaimer, of course, I'm not claiming that how I use them here are the best way. So this is just one way that I figured out was a very fast and quick way to implement this. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that I want is I want to show my data, my taxi data in a table. So what we had so far here, for example, we are showing some sort of data here, some sort of table here too, but it's, um, doesn't really look nice. doesn't look nice to the eye. So, um, one thing that's good about the Plotly graphs is they look pretty nice and they're very customizable. So I'm going to go here and first give this section a title. All right. So as far as I've seen, there are a bunch of sections to how you create a plotly graph. So the first one is you create a figure and that's how it's, this is how it's done. As far as I've seen for the graph objects library, you just say go dot figure, and then you fill it with some parameters, uh, for the um, express library, more or less the same, but then you say PX dot, for example, if you want a bar chart, then you just say bar and then fill it with, um, the parameters. So yeah, graph objects is a little bit more complicated, but you know, it's also, we it can't hurt to know. And after that, to customize how it looks, you can say fig dot update layout, and I'll show you a bunch of uh, ways how you can customize it. What are some options? And at the end, when you want to uh, show this graph that you created or this graph object that you created, you just need to say, Streamlit dot right fig. Um, so yeah, you're basically creating it and then you're customizing it and then you're showing it. If you don't show it, it's not going to uh, be seen in the in your uh, web application. So these are the main steps of how you can do this. And so now let's take a closer look of how you can actually implement this. All right. So if I want to create a basic table, how what I'm going to do is this data go table. And, uh, one of the main things that I have to give the, this function is uh, Heather. And I also want to give it cells. So information on the cells, uh, there are some additional things that you would want to give, but these are basically like the first two things, uh, the Heather accepts a dictionary. 
also the same with cells. And what header and dictionary are, are basically like the header is where you have your column names and cells is the whole body of the table. So I want to use my taxi data um, data set for this. So if you remember, it is the information or the data that is collected from uh, in New York, where we have all the rides of anyone uh, that has taken a ride in a taxi. We have the distance, we have how much money they paid for, how many people were in the car, etc., etc. So this is a very big data set. I just got a fraction of it for now, um, you know, to <laughs> have this program run a little bit faster. So what I'm going to have in the header is uh, the column some specific columns from this taxi data. I don't want to show the whole graph. Let's say what's important for me is the pickup date time, the trip distance, and the total amount of money that people paid for it. Uh, as you can see here, I just copied and pasted it, but I hope you caught it. So basically we are saying I w the values of the header is this list, and this list spans from here to here. I'm basically selecting only part of the data frame and getting the columns of it. I mean, you can also just, you know, remove this and just give it a list, but you know, just to keep it things a little bit neater, I'm going to keep it this way. And uh, am I missing anything? No, but so, you know, you can still do some uh, customization already. Uh, let's see, for example, I can say I want a fill color. Let me add this to the next line. Yeah, I want the fill color to be this. So the header is going to have a specific color. And uh, you can also say where you want to align this text. So this is one way of doing this. So I'm going to do the same thing for cells. Uh, I need to give it some values. So these values are going to be uh, the series objects from my data frame. And uh, as you can see, I give it in a list and I'm giving it some series. Again, I'm going to specify a fill color to already customize it a little bit. And I want them to align left. Maybe let's align the center. So we can see the difference. So I'm not going to customize it for now. I'll use the update layout just to show you what it looks like. So if I save this and go to my app, and I forgot to give it some hashes here. I need to have the hash sign. Yes, it's running. All right, so this is the first version that I get. This is what it looks like. As you can see, there are some margins here. I don't really want that, you know, I can update this later. Uh, but we have a nice, you know, this is centered, this is left aligned. We have, uh, we can scroll this. We have the nice color that we decided that we wanted. Uh, from now on, we just need to update it. But before I go into the update uh, version, maybe you're thinking, okay, how did you like learn about this? This is ridiculous. It looks very complicated. It does still look complicated to me. So I just want to show you how you can figure these things out too. So first what I do is I Google things. I'm like plotly, I write on Google plotly, uh, data frame, show in table. And then I see some people and get their code on like what they did, how they approach this. And then I realize, oh, okay, there's this thing called geo from plotly. Let me look into it. And then I Google geo table and then I find some things there. So um, to just show you what it looks like, for example, what I searched for this was Plotly table. And then I go to the Plotly documentation and I see, okay, this is the simplest way of creating a table. They have cells. So that of course raises the question, uh, what other parameters can I give to this table? So then you look for the table and I guess I search for go.tableplotly. All right. So then I see what are the parameters I can give it? What are the things that I can specify? So we have the cells, we have the header, for example, these are the things that I specified. So that's how you explore what you can do with your code. Uh, and of course, next we have the layout, the update layout thing there. It's basically like, it looks like it's endless what you can customize there. So instead of knowing everything, I think it makes more sense there to also approach it like an exploration. So let's say, you know, 
we're seeing here now there are margins but we don't want these margins we want our table to be as big as this graph object so then you're going to search for plotly update margins or make margins zero and you're going to run into here probably and you know let's look for margins and yeah it's going to tell you how to change the margins of a certain uh graph that you're creating so basically by exploring your code and seeing what other people did and building on top of it based on what you need by googling a lot you can do the same things as i do here so i'm only showing you you know what i did in a small way but then you can make it bigger for yourself so let's also fill the update layout uh, to make it look closer to what we wanted how we want it to look all right so the first thing that we were worried about was the margins right so i'm going to give it a margin um values so again i want the dictionary apparently it accepts dictionary um let's start with some small values and see what happens let's say this okay this is closer to what i wanted to look actually it's pretty big but I still don't like that there is some white background here. And one thing that you can do for that is change the background of this. So we already have a specific background color on our app and I just need to give the same background color to this graph. So how I'm going to do that is give it a new property. Uh, so we already decided the background color is somewhere here. Yes, in the uh, CSS file. Um, one thing that you can do to not keep repeating this background color is to just say background color but with an underscore equals to this guy. So you don't have to keep doing this. I mean, I can also update it here on the CSS uh, markdown file, but it will require me to do some like string concatenation. So I don't want to deal with that for now. So I said background color is this. And here, I'm just going to say this is equal to this background color. And yeah, that should update it nicely. And now it looks very seamless. Now it looks like it definitely belongs there. Uh, one little warning though, I realized that I made a typo here and I changed it. So it's not B color, it's BG color as in background color. So make sure to write that properly. Uh, otherwise you'll get an error. Okay, so this is done. This is easy, you know, uh, you know, it looks pretty nice, pretty decent. I like this, but one thing that bothers me right now is we have very little amount of information in the second and the third column, it still has the same width as the first one. So I want to um, change the width of the columns and I can do that. How am I going to do that is by adding it here actually. So what I need to do is inside go.table, I need to give it a column width. And you basically apply it with, don't forget the, comma, um, the ratios that you want it to be. So I guess this could be like the ratio could be one, one, two, three. Let's see what it would look like. All right, this looks nicer. You can change it as you want. You know, sometimes maybe you'll have a very long string that you want to have more space uh, or yeah, you'll have some small numbers that you want to have like small column widths with. So yeah, that's your choice. So you can decide how you have to update this. Um, this is all we can do with the table. You can customize it further, of course, uh, but I think I'm happy with it now. So let's see how we can do pie charts and line charts. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, why not give it a like and maybe even subscribe, you know, it's nice for me to see when people like things and also kind of motivates me to do more of this work when I see that people are following me. And on top of that, if you're thinking, well, Musra, I like the way that you're teaching things. Maybe then you should go check out my course called Hands-On Data Science, Complete Your First Portfolio Project. I'll be sure to leave the link somewhere here if I can, or maybe in the description. It is a project course where we start from scratch to do a data science project and take it all the way to the end where we have a presentable project and this course will give you the skills to finish a course independently by yourself and also just teach you how a data scientist thinks and works so if you want to become a data scientist or if you're just 
a person who wants to update their skills and know how to work with data and just become a relevant person in today's world, go check out this course. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you around.